Hello, it's Andy from PCR Global. I was just making a video on 31,000 and I thought I'd share something with you. I've pulled a few slides together. It's not the actual video which will be used for the training, but it's to do with principles and I just thought I would uh, share that. The big three, so we talk about the big three principles, the framework and the processes. This is the big three of ISO 31,000-2018 risk management guidelines. You can see the three there. I'm just going to briefly talk about the principles. Whilst I was putting this uh, video together, just thought I'd share, I'd check it out there, and um, if it helps anybody, then fantastic. I spend a fair amount of time talking about the principles. It's really import important, and why? Because they provide the guidance and the characteristics of effective and efficient risk management. That is the guidance provided within 31,000. When you read that statement there and the next statement, they communicate the value of risk management, but also it explains, the principles explain the intention and, pur and purpose of ISO 31,000. I think it's really, really good. It goes in then just to elaborate a little bit about the principles being the foundation and also the fact that they enable the organizations to manage the effect of uncertainty on their objectives, which is the definition of risk as per this standard. So what I wanted to show you was this. This is a, 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 an interesting area for me. Um, ultimately, it's really difficult to teach people and you know, in one sitting and then, and then be able to remember um, what, actually, what actually has been taught. So we try all the time various ways. This is a, this is the way I, I, I often use. I do find this this really helpful. So on the right hand side there, we have the principles of risk management as per the standard, integrated, structured and comprehensive, customized, inclusive, dynamic, based on best available information, consideration given to human and cultural factors, and also continual improvement. They are the eight principles. On the left hand side there, I put the statement and then it's a question of matching that to the actual principle. I like to do it this way because it does make people think. And if you spend um, more than 10 minutes on this, then it is definitely beneficial and it helps to sort of take in what is actually being said. So this is what I've just been working on. I just thought I would share it. Look at the statement. The risk management framework and process must be something and proportionate to the organization's external and internal context relating to the organization's own objectives. So what must that be? And then the, the requirement for the students are then to pick one of the eight. Customized. Very important. All organizations are different, as we know. Frameworks are different. We can use various frameworks. So ultimately, it has to be customized, but also built to the right size of the organization. We don't want to overcook it, so proportionate. The next one. Appropriate and timely involvement of stakeholders enables their knowledge, their views and perceptions to be considered. If we do that, if we involve the right people, then we should get improved awareness and informed risk management. Also, that con that consultation will really improve, will gain feedback, and it should help for a smoother, smoother project or a smoother risk management iteration. So, what would that be? Timely involvement. What do we think? Inclusive, including people, including stakeholders within the risk management process. Risk management is in, an integral part of all organization activities. We know it is. So integral, which one do you think we're looking at? Integrated, that's one of the principles. It's also a part of the framework. Integrated, so it must be integrated throughout the organization. The next one, risks can emerge, risks can change, or risks can disappear as the external and internal context of the organization changes. Nothing stays the same. Our internal context can change if the external context change changes. Really, really important. So this we've got to be monitoring this all the time because those risks are going to change. Pointless having a risk register that sat there for months on end. It needs to be reviewed. Risk management anticipates 
detects, acknowledges and responds to those changes and events in an appropriate and timely manner. So that is the statement. Which principle do we think that fits best with in an appropriate and timely manner? Dynamic. So dynamism. Things are changing. Our risk management process must deal with that. The activities we undertake for risk management must deal with that dynamism. We can't have things sitting on shelves for a long time. A something approach to risk management contributes to consistent and comparable results. So a something approach. We've got consistency in there. We've got compar com com comparable in there. That is going to be structured and comprehensive. We've got to work out what that structure looks like. We've got to embed that into the organization. People have to be trained on it. People have to know about it. And it must be as comprehensive as is needed. Remember as well, because we said it has to be customized, ultimately in certain areas, when you decide where you're going to apply your risk management, in certain areas, that may not be too comprehensive. But again, when we develop the framework, when we develop the policies, when we look across the organizations to see where and how we're going to embed this in, structured and comprehensive, it does give us the best potential for consistency. Human behavior and culture significantly influence all aspects of risk management at each level and stage. Well, obviously that is number seven. We've got to take human behavior into consideration, of course. So again, we customize in our framework, potentially around, around human and cultural factors within the organization. So the next one, quite a long one. The inputs to risk management are based on historical and current information. So that's the past and the current information, as well as, as, well as on any future expectations that we may have. Risk management explicitly takes into account limitations associated with such information and expectations. So ultimately, we not just take in that information as verbatim, we are taking into consideration a limitation associated with that information that we're getting. We're not blindly going to be trusting things. Information should be timely, clear and available to relevant stakeholders. Relevant stakeholders, we mentioned earlier on about being inclusive. So timely. It's quite a big statement there. I, this is one of the principles um, really makes me think and it really assists in my deeper understanding of risk management best available information of course it is if you're making decisions based on the weakest information that's an issue we all know that information is not always going to be the same we've got bounded rationality there's going to be a number of reasons why that information isn't going to be accurate but it should be as accurate as possible and the last one yes the last one risk management is something through learning and experience well if we look up and down the line there that's going to be continually improved in the statement but it's continual improvement plan do check act it's a cycle we've got to go forward all the time we won't get these things right uh, first hit but next time round we will get them right so that's it that's it really those are the eight principles this is part of the the delivery that i'm working on i thought i'd share it with you i think there's one another slide here this slide actually isn't related so much so to the principles but ultimately i'm just showing you because i can what's the purpose of risk management a lot of people actually struggle with articulating what the purpose is if we look at this the purpose of risk management is the creation and the protection of value that really does help us view risk management through a different lens what it does it improves performance when we do it improves performance of the organization it encourages innovation throughout the organization because we're going to understand what we're doing we're going to be willing to take one or two one or two risks of course when you think about it risk has an upside as well so that can encourage our innovation but it really does support the achievement of the organization's objectives and that's why we do it that's why it can create and it can protect value well i hope you found that interesting only a short video going through the eight principles of risk management 
as per ISO 31000. Thanks for watching. I really can't wait to get this this um, this course out there. It is taking me longer than I wanted to work on it, but life happens, doesn't it? Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.